we just had the scary fast Apple event. First Apple event to happen during the nighttime, I believe. Happened at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, which is pretty weird. Tim Cook came out and he did say... Good evening. Good evening. He did say good evening. However, no Dracula costume. He didn't modulate his voice. He wasn't like, good evening. <laughs> he just said, good evening, which is how he does every good morning. I'm sad. I'm sad and happy. I'm, gl- I'm s- glad he still did good evening, even though it was the obvious meme. But yeah. Do you guys know yeah. a lot about shoes? Because I don't. And people are making a big deal of the fact that he was wearing some black like <laughs> shoes of some kind. They said Air Force Ones. Are those popular shoes? Alice. Does Marquez wear those? No. no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why is that Are funny? we? <laughs> that in. That in. Wait, yeah, I think it's a reference to a video that came out four years ago on a channel that's hilarious called RDC World One. And in the video, they talk about how people who wear black Air Force Ones are crazy in such a way that if you ever fight them, they'll just massacre you <laughs> because they have nothing to lose. I believe that. That's about the, like the, the core joke of the video is that if you're wearing those shoes, it just means you're psychotic. <laughs> <laughs> Psychotic Tim Cook, and violent. Tim Cook is probably one of those guys that would be really friendly to me, and then I would accidentally like spill some salt on him at a family dinner, and then he would destroy me. Anyway, uh, any notes on the on the intro? The intro, we... yeah. It's funny that I just saw all these things that were like Apple didn't have to go this hard with like the dark Apple Park, but it was like, I mean, it's cool that it was in the at night, but yeah. it's just the dark Apple Park. Like, yeah, I guess we've driven around there before, like. Right, when so it's dark and it, it looks night. really cool does, but yeah. like everyone made it seem like it was this set that's like look it's all spooky it's like it's at night it's just it's cool night. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they um, didn't play like spooky music yeah though. for sure no i think they yeah. they they went into it well apple's been pretty good at like having a slight meme on top of some things yeah. and like breaking the the seriousness of right. all of it and they do it really well um right. so like that initial shot where he's like between the stairs and like the nice lighting and everything yeah. was re- it was really awesome unlike that one plus ad where he like walks into the other room and then he's in like the arctic for five <laughs> seconds and then he turns around and walks back into and the, the other transition room. is terribly timed and, and there everything. is no explanation <laughs> no. yeah yeah it definitely makes more sense um i am also sad he wasn't in costume but Good evening. We'll soundbite that for the rest of eternity, probably. Um, So it was cool. It's still 8 p.m. East Coast time Mm -hmm. felt really strange. Yeah. We had to send Brandon out there because Marquez isn't here. He went to the event to shoot some footage of it. But like when we first saw that event invite at 5 p.m. PDT, we're like, this makes no sense. I do think it's kind of funny how even though they're a West Coast company, they sort of like orient everything for New York. Because, like, 5 p.m. is not dark yet there. Yeah. But at the same time, they couldn't do 11 p.m. here, you know? I guess that is what they're trying to make sure is that it's a reasonable time both sides. Because yeah. usually when we're out there, it's, one or it's like, 10 a.m. out there, but 1 p.m. over yeah. here. So, like, it's still not a, a terrible time. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's that's it. This this whole event, you're going to have to do – you're going to do a lot here because generally when Marquez is here, you both are using Apple Silicon. Yeah. I'm still using – the only Mac I use is my work computer, and okay. it's Intel-based. Yeah. So I am like the, as much as I think all the new Apple Silicon is great and some of the easiest, I think the MacBook Air is one of the easiest laptops to recommend to people. Yeah. I don't use any Apple Silicon. Okay. So I'll be here. I'll be semi-comedic relief maybe in some parts, <laughs> and I'll ask a bunch of questions just on the outside of things. But like, okay. this is out of my wheelhouse for okay. sure. Okay, um, for sure. Yeah, so we got M3 M3 Pro and M3 Max. Um, it's silicon based on the A15 or A17 Pro processor mm-hmm. in the um, iPhone 15 Pro, and it's the first three three nanometer chipset for yep. desktop um, for Apple Silicon. And I think in general, I think it's the first ever three nanometer chipset for a desktop computer. Okay, or... I know there was. I very specifically remember reading something that said first three nanometer for desktop. So yeah. that makes me assume well, because there's something a, else. Well, it's cell phone. It's on the, okay, it's okay. On the um, yeah. iPhone 15 Pro, right? So yeah, M3, eight core CPU, 10 core GPU, up to 24 gigs of RAM. We got M3 Pro, which is 11 or 12 core CPU, 14 or 18 core GPU, up to 36 gigs of RAM. And then M3 Max, 14 or 16 core CPU, 30 or 40 core GPU, and up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. That's a hell of a leap between is, those two. Yeah. That's, yeah. It's a lot. 
Um, throughout the entire keynote, they were comparing it mostly to the M1. Mm-hmm. And I noticed this, and the, my first thought process was like, oh, that just makes the performance gain seem a lot better, right? Mm-hmm. But at the same time, if you think about it, they released M2 in January of this year, yeah. or the M2 MacBook Pros in January of this year. So it's only been 10 months since M2. Now, I've heard that all of the M2 devices have been selling really badly. And the reason is because M1 was so good. Exactly. And was such a big leap over the, anything Intel related mm-hmm. that nobody wanted to buy an M2 computer. I think that's so important is like the jump from Intel to to sil- the a- Apple Silicon was so big that so many people upgraded whether they needed the upgrade yeah. or not that then so many people have new computers right. and the jump from M1 to M2, yeah. not that big. Not so. that big. And still, I mean, there's a there's a more noticeable bump from M2, from M1 to M3, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's like, I, I spent $5,000 on a four terabyte M1 Max 16 inch MacBook Pro, and I plan to have that basically until it dies, yeah, which sure. is probably gonna be five to six years, or yeah. even longer. Yeah, you, know? you should have these computers for a while. And I guess it does make sense where you're saying like one to three is a bigger jump than two. So maybe they can convince someone on an M1 to yeah. jump to it, but like, yeah, it still feels like your M1's probably kicking ass compared to whatever you had before that. And yeah. even a jump to M3 in two years is like, that's a lot of money right. to be spending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they had some very nice, badly labeled graphs as usual. Uh, of course. Um, but the kind of crux of this whole update is that they're able to do faster performance at the same power level so they kept showing these graphs that would like they would push the power further than the previous one and it was way higher but at the same amount of power draw it was like you know 30 percent 15 percent faster in certain certain areas so efficiency cores are 30 percent faster and this is rated by them um we're gonna have to get these laptops in and actually test it against them too but apple rates the uh, M3 as 30% faster than M2 for efficiency cores and 50% faster than M1. The performance cores are rated at 15% faster than M2 and 30% faster than M1. They added hardware-based ray tracing and mesh shading. There was a lot of conversation before this event about how this was going to be like very graphics and gaming focused. Mm -hmm. And they've really been pushing into the gaming stuff recently. Like, Three events in a row have been kind of gaming oriented, mm-hmm. right? Like WWDC, they released the um, gaming porting toolkit for yep. Metal, where all of a sudden all of these developers who are just making things for Windows computers can now like really easily port their games to Mac, which is really awesome. Yep. I don't know how much the industry has actually started doing that. Um, I know Al- Alex is working on something around yeah, that. Yeah, he's been testing something. So I'm very curious to talk to him about that and see if games start moving over. I only really play Dota 2, which has always been Mac native, mm. which is nice. And it already plays at 120 FPS on the M1 Max MacBook Pro. So, you know. Um, but they're making a big deal of something they're calling dynamic caching. Yes. And I did a lot of research into this last night. Okay. It is sort of a black box that they don't really, they haven't really talked about that much. Yeah. Um, They say that it is the largest leap forward in graphics architecture for Apple Silicon, which, if you think about it, just means that it's a bigger leap than M1 was to M2. Yeah. (laughs) Can I also real quick, and I I might ask this and I'm completely wrong and misremembering, but the dynamic caching was essentially that it's calculating the exact amount of memory you need for a specific program and only using that amount while making sure that the rest of it Sim- is similar. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. I did a, bu- I did a bunch of research okay. on this last I night. just wanted to start somewhere. Yeah, and then, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I would, I want to try to talk to Apple about this cause it seems mm-hmm. like no one's gotten a clear answer. Um, but from what I think that I know about how GPUs work right now is like when you have a GPU, and an application starts, that application will need various different types of memory to be running during that session, Mm -hmm. right? So it allocates specific amounts of memory to different different data types to be able to like, oh, I need to load in a bunch of shaders for this game. Mm -hmm. I need to load in a bunch of this for this game. And it stores all of these things in memory because it doesn't want to go to system memory because that takes a lot longer to fetch. Yeah. Right. So theoretically, what this dynamic caching thing is, is it's constantly monitoring how much memory each data type needs so that it can use like 
exactly the amount that it needs, which frees up that memory to be used for the rest of the machine. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that this is going to be as useful for like the 128 gigabyte of RAM model of this because you already have a ton of memory. Yeah. Um, But... For like you know the eight gig model, yeah, I can't believe there's an eight gig model. Yeah, there. we we'll we'll address that soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but for the the models that have less actual like shared memory, it could be more useful. Yeah, for sure. Um, and they say that it should significantly increase the performance in like graphics intensive applications and games. Okay. Very, very curious if that is actually the case. I mean, and that's also good because generally the things that are pinging memory the hardest are graphic intense yeah. things and yeah. applications. Yeah. yeah. So I'm um, good. And a lot of people are using Apple products for like very like rendering or, or design and stuff like yeah. that, like graphic intensive programs. Right. So the reason I want to take all of this with a grain of salt is because I also found something from last year where someone was saying that the M1 and M2 based machines basically had an architecture problem that was making the amount of memory that they could like store in memory and not and before they had to go to system memory not as high as they could be or something or it was being really inefficient with that. Okay. And they were saying that it was like an architecture issue. Um and we can throw up the we can put the tweet it was like a tweet storm that we can put in the okay. in the Everyone loves comments. a good tweet storm. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, I would like to talk to Apple about this. They're probably going to give me some runaround uh, or... A nameless graph. Yeah, <laughs> to, nameless to graph. Or they'll point. just repeat my question and then say they're committed to performance or whatever. <laughs> but um, I think in the next week or two, you're probably going to see people actually digging into what this actually means mm-hmm. and how many changes that it... Act, how much it actually changes um, the way their machine performs. It would be really nice if it was significant um it, especially all be, things yeah <laughs> yeah especially since they're leaning harder into gaming and that kind of stuff for sure so that'd be really great um the sdr uh on each of the displays now is to, goes to 600 nits instead of 500 okay so previously these devices obviously could hit peak brightness of a lot higher yeah. but for standard di- standard dynamic range content it was getting to 500 now it pushes to 600 so brighter good um battery life is theoretically improved across the board by about an hour which is just process node shrinking from um four nanometer to three or was it five i think four i'm not sure either five, four or five to three anyway <laughs> better battery to three so an hour of better battery life pretty much across the board now, weirdly, this is another a thing that a lot of people are talking about. They reduced the memory bandwidth on most of the machines, which is confusing and weird. I was going to say, if you have to use the term most of the machines, <laughs> yeah. it feels super Apple, yes. but also is like insanely confusing, and I don't know why this keeps happening. Yeah, so they re- they reduced the memory bandwidth on the M2- on M3 Pro, from 200 gigabytes to 150 gigabytes per second, okay, which is strange. Mm-hmm. And then on the M- there are two models of the M3 Max with different ar- different amounts of um, uh, different speeds. Okay, one of them goes down to 300 gigabyte gigabytes per second from 400, and one of them stays at 400 gigabytes per second. Okay, so but you're saying the M2 with. the M2 Max always is for so 400. Yeah, the M- the M2 Pro always had 200, and mm-hmm. the M2 Max always had 400. And now we have multiple versions of both for M3. Uh, for M3 Pro, we only have 150. And oh, is, for, oh, oh. But for the Max, we have 300 and 400. Okay. Yeah. Fun. To me, that says binning. Okay. Like it mean it to me that says that they weren't able to get certain silicon to uh, hit those speeds, so they mm-hmm. decided to just sell them at a lower price. This was wasn't there. Um... What was it? There was a uh, like storage speed difference on a either a MacBook or a. Oh yeah, it was like the, a few um, years ago. It right? was the 13 inch MacBook Pro that if you got the if you got the 128 gigabyte model, it was half as fast as the 256, and the reason is because they used 128 gigabyte DIMMs, and for the 256 model, they just used two DIMMs, which could be read and written in parallel. Least, okay. And that's why they were, yeah. Twice it's one of those that. things where I get there's like hardware issues and all of that, but it's just super confusing when it doesn't get labeled very well, and you're yeah. buying ultimately the same thing, which feels like a and a small upgrade, but really that upgrade is 
far different yeah. than what you think and you're actually gaining or losing performance based right. on something you don't expect to gain or lose or performance it's not very transparent exactly it's yeah anything nothing about the internals of any of apple's devices feels transparent there's a lot all. of weird stuff this year when you go to configure your macbook where like if you configure certain models you can't have the 96 gigs of ram but you can have the 128 gigs of ram and i think it's just in the way that they um that they group memory together okay but it's they're still like a lot of different models of this. Yeah. Um, and it kind of feels like they're trying to push people towards the more expensive options because, again, like the M3 Pro maxes out at 36 gigabytes of memory, whereas the M3 Max maxes out at 128, right? It's like that's a huge difference. Yeah. So it's not just 2X, it's like 4X. It's that ladder short that we talked about the other day. Yeah, the pricing like ladder very quickly, thing. like, oh man, but. This is only X amount more expensive, but look at how much more I'm getting out mm -hmm. of it. And then you step up to that and you're like, oh, but then I need to add this. And that's only a couple hundred more dollars. Yeah. And then you've got a $5,000 exactly. laptop. Yeah. Suddenly, yeah, I think this year, uh, if you completely max out the machine, it's like $7,200. 16-inch MacBook Pro. 16-inch MacBook Pro, 8 what? terabytes, 8 terabytes of storage, 128 gigabytes of shared memory. That's uh, more 40 gigabytes of that's more GPU. Yeah, it's more expensive because it's because they have more memory now. They've got up to 128 gigabytes of memory now as opposed to 96. Yeah. But Ellis, don't worry, because now if we're going to talk about the MacBook Pros, the 14 inch now does start at 1599, which is cheaper than last year. Yeah, but that's a useless However. computer. <laughs> However, <laughs> at yeah, that point, yeah. you, you know, what's crazy is like it seems like two hundred dollars is the the, the tier the step, the step yeah, right the, you know the ladder I mean? per step so if you go two hundred dollars under that sixteen hundred dollar macbook pro you know what you get the fourteen hundred dollar exact same spec macbook air without any of the the ports or anything they even put that one exactly two hundred dollars below it's not they, even the same computer they know what they're doing <laughs> they know what they're doing but to to explain why it's cheaper is just because this year they are making a base M3 chip MacBook Pro, which yes. there was no M2 base model right. MacBook Pro. Yeah, they uh, but they who wants that? yeah. Well, for the well, okay, look for the last two years they had the 13 inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar, and who wanted oh, that true. exactly? Exactly. Yeah, Adam, no, put you your didn't. hand down. I, I will die on this hill. Oh, the Touch God. Bar was amazing. They messed up when they replaced the function row with it. If they had a function row on the keyboard yeah. and a touch bar, yeah. it would have been sick. I agree. The touch bar was space, awesome. Man. The biggest problem with the touch bar was that it would crash all the time and it had your function keys on it. Yeah. That's what I mean. If they didn't put the function keys yeah. there, who cares if it crashed? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. That would have been fine. That would have been fine. And the touch bar was not a bad idea. It was kind of a good idea, but they, yeah, they kind of messed up with putting the function I'm keys. I'm saying it'll, it'll be back in five years. <laughs> yeah. Just like all the ports and everything and the SD card slot. Like yeah. it'll be the upgraded MacBook Pro in a few years. So they got rid of the 13 inch. Yes. And instead, they are now offering the same. Almost the same chassis. It's not actually the same chassis of the 14 inch, uh, starting at 1599 with the base M3 chip. But they did take away a Thunderbolt 3 port, so now you only have two Thunderbolt 3 ports instead of three. But that—that's what I, like what I'm getting yeah. at is physically for two hundred dollars less, you can get the exact same spec MacBook Air that will almost definitely perform exactly the same, right? Well, like that's the, M2 though. Oh, okay. yeah. There's not out yet. Yeah. Which but is kind of something we talked about, I feel like, last week, which yeah. is so, just like the timing of all of these things uh, being released is very strange because yeah. we're not getting air. We'll probably get right. them in like May or yeah, June. Yeah, didn't the air come out before the pros for M2? I thought the air came out. That's what I thought. Let me look this yeah. up. Yeah, I think the M2 MacBook Air came out in July. And I also just want to note that we didn't even get... We, wait, wait, wait. Hold, hold that thought. Because we didn't even get an M3 Mac Mini. Whoops. Why do you got to put... <laughs> That's the best button. That's the best button. <laughs> yeah, so the, the M2 MacBook Air launched in July 2022. And the M2 pros launched in january 2023 this time they just launched the pros without the air and we don't even have an m3 mac mini which also seems really weird yeah i have no idea what's going on with some of this it's stuff super i weird. also this is a question um we'll have later at the end of this but 
I'm very interested to think if we think more things will be released by the end of the year. Um, I don't think so. That, but that's a good point. Like there was no Mac Mini or Mac. The Mac Mini and Mac Studio came out at the same time last year, right? Um, I don't think so. I think the Mac. Oh, you mean for M2? Yeah. This is so confusing. The Mac Mini was first for M1, and the Mac Studio came out with the MacBook Pros. I think okay. for M1. And I thought when the Mac Studio came out, there was also like, I don't know, M2 somebody's Mac Mini was January 2023. The Mac Mini M2 was Mac at that time. M2 when was Mac the Mac Mini? When was the studio? That was with the MacBook Pros. Yeah, M2 Mac Mini. And the what about the studio? Did it come out around the same time as the M2 think, iMac? Yeah. I'm kidding, by the way. There wasn't no M2 iMac. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody even flinched at that. So. I'm so confused right now. <laughs> okay. Apple. Let's reel her back in. Yeah, I think Apple is also a little bit confused. <laughs> yeah. M3 MacBook Pro. Where did we get to? That's okay. Yeah, we'll, so, we'll reel it back here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anyway, yeah, so only two Thunderbolt 3 ports instead of three. Okay. And it can only, still can only run one external display, um, which is sad. Yeah, that is sad. Up to 6K, 60 hertz, but you're going to have to get the Pro if you want to run two displays and the Max if you want to run four. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, <clears throat> play that again? I didn't realize all the voices that are also in. Yeah, there's the voice that just like that, that like mystical sound effect the other. No, no, but oh. <laughs> Wait, how does what a different that? sound? It sounds no. like another sound every no. time I listen no, to it. The same one, ready? No. No what are you? What? What are you guys talking about? It's being modified <laughs> every time. This is a fig mode of mine. It's being changed every time. <laughs> Yeah, because that was in the previous one. Dynamically <laughs> inserted sound effects. <laughs> really? <laughs> I never noticed the does it at the end of it. Yeah, it wasn't a super clean cut. We can. Try I also it. never noticed me going Whatever. no way. Yeah, I didn't either. No. Here, play it. I'm faded. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Is that Alvin and the Chipmunks? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. Whoops. I know, I know, I know. All right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, we can do this. Uh, all right. Wait, there's a funny pass. Oh. And make sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> there, now that's our clips outro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>